Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Friday, October 30th, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's college football and NFL games respectively and look ahead to the weekend and make the, the picks for the podcast. And then we'll do um, some NFL COVID chatter, a um, couple positive cases in Wisconsin and um, obviously um, Clemson's quarterback Trevor Lawrence. Um a big time um eye turning major league baseball managerial hire and NASCAR we'll get into as well and my best bet and fab five for the day and weekend respectively. All right, we'll start in college football. We had two games last night that were um one was competitive the other not so much first up Georgia Southern defeats South Alabama 24-17 Georgia Southern 4-2 USA 3-3 so I rebound and pass bet there for a victory with Georgia Southern that covered the three and a half easily and then I get another win for podcast picks um Fresno State over Colorado State, 38-17. I predicted that they'd win their game as a dog of two and a half points. Fresno's 1-1, Colorado State's 1-0. I mean, sorry, 0-1. And And then tonight, we'll just get right into it. Three games. First up on the docket is an interesting game in the... Big 10, 7.30 ESPN, Minnesota, Maryland. Minnesota giving a whopping 19.5 over under 61.5. I would make this game Minnesota 4.5, total 59.5. Um, so I have two leans here. Maryland getting down the points and the under. Um, yeah, um to his brother could very well play well in this game and whatnot. And that's why I think that they can cover. But the total's high here in my mind. Uh, Minnesota's defense was atrocious against Michigan. Um, I don't really believe in Maryland. Their offense was atrocious against Northwestern. So there could be like the double bounce back spot for um, the over. But I'm going to take here Maryland getting 19F and under 61 and a half. Next up, you got at 9 o'clock, East Carolina at Tulsa. Tulsa giving 15.5 over under 62.5. I'd make this Tulsa 5, total 54.5. Give me East Carolina getting the points and the under. Those are my two picks, but I'm going to go with the spread again here, but I also like under 62.5 as well. Um. I think Tulsa last couple weeks has been a little overvalued. Um, although Tulsa proved me wrong against South Florida, but I think East Carolina, unlike South Florida, can hang with them. So give me East Carolina getting the points. Although I expect Tulsa to win. And then last but not least, Hawaii at Wyoming. Wyoming giving one and a half over under sixty two and a half. Um, I project Hawaii by one and a half. Total sixty one and a half. So yesterday the total was fifty nine and a half, but it shot over a couple points. So um, I was leaning over in this game. I had overwritten down, but I'm going to change my pick to Hawaii getting the points. I don't like it, but you got to do what you got to do sometimes. So give me Hawaii plus the points and plus um. Or I'm sorry, minus 104 is the money line here. So give me Hawaii again, the points and minus 104 on the money line. And now into the Saturday slate of games. First up, you got Boston College at Clemson. Trevor Lawrence tested positive for COVID, so he will not be playing. We'll get into more on that later. 
They took the line down. I projected... With Trevor Lawrence, I projected Clemson 11, total 57 and a half. And now I had to take off points and jump it down to five and a half. And the total will probably drop as well. So um, I'll probably take BC and under whenever those lines come out. So um, we'll go over what the the line in the total wound up being on the podcast on Monday. But so for right now... I'll probably take Boston College if the number is greater than five. And I'll probably take the under if the number is more than, let's say, 52. Alrighty. Next up, you got Coastal Carolina, Georgia State. Coastal is giving two and a half over under 59 and a half. I am taking over 59.5 as the play here for the show. I project the total to be 68.5, and, and I project um, Coastal is a 2.5 point favorite. Um, I don't feel good about it because of the injury to the um, the quarterback of Coastal Carolina. So it's going to be over 59.5 there. Um, Georgia at Kentucky. Georgia's giving a whopping 17.5 over under. 42 and a half I project. Um Georgia 9 total 44 and a half. So I love Kentucky getting the 17 and a half. Love it. Um Kentucky's not that bad. They can uh score a little bit. They play good defense. So give me Kentucky plus 17 and a half. Um next up you got Iowa State at Kansas. Iowa State giving a whopping 27.5 over under 51.5. I project Iowa State by 21.5 total 57. I love the over. Kansas overs have been hitting left and right. Um, They just really have been. And um, their defense is bad. Their offense is bad. Especially without, uh, without Pookie there. He opted out. So, um... Their defense, like I said, is really, really bad. Iowa State's offense is not that bad. The total is just low because Iowa State is a good defense. So um, give me over 51 and a half. I don't um, – it's not my favorite, favorite pick in the world, but I'll go with it just for now. Next up, Kansas State, West Virginia. West Virginia giving three and a half over under 46 and a half. I would make West Virginia two and a half. And total 52 and a half. Um, I like this over. I really do. Um, West Virginia's offense is starting to get a little better. Um, Kansas State's offense has been pretty decent this year, although their defense is okay. And the funny thing is that the unranked team is favored against a ranked team. And we all know the the thing there is um, someone knows something. This is one of those games. I'm staying away because I project the line West Virginia 2.5. So um, instead, I will take over 46.5. Next up, um, Memphis, Cincinnati. Memphis giving 6.5. I'm sorry, Cincinnati giving 6.5. Over under 55.5. I project Cincinnati. Five total fifty five and a half. I hate this pick, but I'm taking Memphis. Um, it's the only play I have to make here because my numbers are pretty much dead set. Next up, Michigan State at Michigan. Michigan State's giving twenty four and a half over under fifty one and a half. I would make Michigan six total sixty five and a half. I love Sparty and I love the over. Um. I just think that um, this is your classic overreaction line because Michigan looked so good in prime time, and then Michigan State just lost the Rockers. I'm going to say Michigan wins, but Sparty covers, and I like the over as well. Next up, Purdue, Illinois. Purdue's favored by 7.5, over under 58.5. I would make this game Purdue 3, total 44.5. 
Um, I love the um there in this game. Um, Purdue defensively isn't that bad, and I don't think Illinois offensively is that good. Um, so I'm going to take the under in Purdue, Illinois, and I have a humongous edge on that, by the way. A whopping 14-point edge on the under in this game. And I also like Illinois a little bit at 7.5 as well. But the under's the play for the show. Next up, Temple Tulane. Tulane's giving 3.5 over under 58.5. I would make this Tulane 3, total 69. So give me the over here. Um, I think these two teams are going to score a lot. Um... So, um, I want to say Tulane wins, but um, I like the over. Next up, UTSA FAU. FAU is giving four and a half over under forty seven and a half. I would make this FAU by nine and a half in total, forty five and a half. So give me FAU minus the four and a half. Um, I know I took. FA thinking that that was the right side in a game a couple weeks ago. So, um, give me FA minus the points, but I don't feel super, super about it. Wake Forest, Syracuse. Wake's giving 12.5 over under 60.5. This is just unbelievable. Um,. I'd make this Syracuse as a favorite. This is one of my numbers I think is off. Syracuse 8.5, total 53.5. Um, I'm taking Syracuse in the points again. They're plus 360 on the money line. I'm not um, going to make the big clear and say that they're going to win outright. But I'm going to do for the podcast play, I'm going to take the under 60.5. As the podcast play here, um, like I said, I project the total 53 and a half. So, um, taking the under here. Next up, um, 2 o'clock, UCF Houston. UCF's giving 2 and a half over under a whopping 82 and a half. Then I make UCF 9, total 72 and a half. So I'm taking UCF 2 and a half. Yes, Houston told me I think valued here um and UCF yeah has lost some uh weird games this year but I think that they get it done here on the road in a shootout against Houston next up three o'clock Bryce at Southern Miss Southern Miss giving one and a half over under 58 and a half I project Southern Miss by eight total 73 and a half I love Southern Miss laying the point and a half I think Rice although they look improved, but they're super overvalued. I'm sorry. I'm taking Southern Miss minus one and a half, and I like the over 58 as well. But the podcast play is going to be uh, Southern Miss. Troy, Arkansas State. Um, I project Arkansas State by a half point total 66. Arkansas State's giving two and a half total 71 and a half. I'm going to take the under 71 and a half here. Um. I just think that this total is very high for these teams. I have an edge on the under. Like, a 40-30 game wins. 37-30 wins. 33-37 wins. Think about that. 3.30 CBS, LSU, Auburn. LSU's giving 2.5 over under 65.5. I project Auburn to be favored here by 5 in the total 57.5. I'm taking Auburn here um, plus the 2.5 and on the money line at plus 112. Um, trap game for LSU. I also like the under in this game as well, but LSU's offense is very good. But podcasts play Auburn two and a half, and I like them to win the game outright, so plus 112. Northwestern Iowa. Um, 
I was giving two and a half over under 46 and a half. I project Iowa three and a half total 45 and a half. This is ridiculous because the not my numbers are so close. But I have to take Iowa minus the points on um, left down spot for um Northwestern, I think, here. Although they looked very, very competent in their game. I have a edge on the under, but I don't like that either. So I am taking um Iowa minus the two and a half, banking on them to win by three or more. Notre Dame, Georgia Tech. Notre Dame games giving 20 and a half over under 57 and a half. I project Notre Dame 19 and a half total 54. Give me the under in this game. Um, I like the over in Notre Dame's game last week, which they did by themselves, but this time I'm going to flip back to the under. Um, I just think that um, Notre Dame's defense is very good. Georgia Tech's offense stinks. And I think that Georgia Tech's going to play a little better defensively. So 27-7 to 7 is right. For an under. Or 27 10, even, too. I know that's an easy under, but 27 17, even. So give me the under here. Even 27 20 would work for me. Or 30 to 24, 30 27. There you go. I forgot to do Rutgers' game last week against um, Michigan State, which um, my pick would have been taking RU, getting the points, making a narrative of them being a little competitive, but they wound up winning the game outright. And now they are home for Indiana. Um, Indiana's giving 11. Total is... 52 and a half. I project Indiana to be favored by four and a half total 67. I like the over a lot here. I think Rutgers' offense has found some new life. Indiana's offense is pretty good as well. And I also like Rutgers getting the points. So um, play for the show be the over. TCU Baylor. TCU's giving two and a half over under 47 and a half. I project um, TCU by a half total, 49. I have no choice but to take Baylor getting the points. I don't like it really that much, but it's just a uh, a square play, I guess. Because I think a lot of people like TCU. Louisiana Tech is hosting UAB. UAB giving 12.5 over under 46.5. I make this UAB four total, 47.5. I love La Tech here to cover. Um, they um, really haven't been successful at covering this year, but I just like them to cover here against UAB, who I expect to win, obviously. 4 o'clock, Appalachian State, UL Monroe, App State laying 30.5 over under 55.5. I would make App State favored. In this game by 19 in the total 48 and a half. So I like um, UL Monroe getting the 31 and a half. I could see a garbage time touchdown. If App State wins 40 to 10, I win the bet. Next up, Ole Miss Vanderbilt. Ole Miss giving a whopping 17 and a half over under 63 and a half. I predict this as actually a pick em. Yes, a pick em. And a total of 60. I'm taking Vanderbilt in the points. I'm not calling for them to pull off the outright upset. But I just think they cover this number, quite frank, easily here against Ole Miss. Texas at Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State giving 3.5 over under 58.5. I project this to be Oklahoma State by 4, total 57. I'm taking... The under here, and it's a slim under. 
my numbers are pretty much dead set in this game, but if at gunpoint I've taken the under, Oklahoma State's defense is actually pretty good, and it's the best unit on the field in this game. So give me the under 58 and a half in that one. Virginia Tech, Louisville. Virginia Tech giving three and a half over under 67 and a half. I project Vatek by five and a half total, 61 and a half. So I have two edges here, and um, I'm going to take Virginia Tech with the three and a half for the show, but I have a bigger edge on the under, but I don't trust it. So give me Virginia Tech minus three and a half for the podcast, and I like under 67 and a half as well. Six o'clock, Boise State at Air Force. Boise State's giving a whopping 14 and a half over under 48 and a half. I project Boise two and a half total, 45 and a half. So give me Air Force plus the two touchdowns. I think they cover that easily. I like taking the military services as big dogs. It didn't work out for Navy last week. So um, give me the um, uh, Air Force plus 14 and a half. No, I don't think they'll win. I just think they cover that. If Boise wins, let's say, 30 to 20, it's a win for me. 7 o'clock, Charlotte Duke. Duke's giving a whopping 9.5, over under 55.5. I project this, Charlotte 5.5, total 52.5. I love Charlotte getting to 9.5. I think they'll win the game on the field, too. They're plus 290 on the money line, so give me Charlotte plus the 9.5. Mississippi State, Alabama. Bama giving 30.5, over under 63.5. I project this, Bama... 16, total 57 and a half. So, I am going to take under 63 and a half. This is for once where I'm on an under in a Bama game. Um, as I have an edge on the under. Mississippi State offense not that good. So, I expect Alabama's defense to step up here a little bit. So, if Bama wins 40 to 17, it's a win for me. So give me Bama and Mississippi State under 63 and a half, and I kind of like um, the Bulldogs getting all those points as well, just to cover, not the win, obviously. Next goes San Jose State. San Jose State's giving a whopping 13 and a half over under 54 and a half. And my lines say um, San Jose State 2 and a half, total 40 and a half. This game's being played at San Jose State because of COVID. They just moved the game because Mexico, or, um, they are, um, their home field and their campus, there's a lot of positive tests in that town. So they moved the game to San Jose State's home field. Um, I like the Mexico getting all those points. Um, it's their first game of the year. I don't like San Jose State all that much. But I just think New Mexico is undervalued here a little bit. And I like under. Oh, the total went down to 54 and a half. It was 57 and a half yesterday. And my projected number is 40 and a half. So I still like that under a lot as well. And you know what? I am going to do that as the, the podcast play. I'm going to actually do San Jose State, um, New Mexico under 54 and a half as the podcast play, and then I also like New Mexico a little bit as well. 7.30, Arkansas, Texas A&M. A&M giving 11.5 over under 54.5. I'd make this A&M 8.5 total, 50.5. I like the under in this one, too. Um, I just, um, both these offenses are pretty good, but um, I think that A&M's D will get enough stops, and I also like Arkansas getting the uh, the points a little bit as well. So the podcast plays under 54.5. Next up, Missouri, Florida. Florida giving 12 and a half over under 61 and a half. I make this Florida 8, total 65 and a half. So I like Missouri getting the points here and the over 61 and a half. But I'm taking Missouri as the podcast play here. This is Florida's first game in almost a month. Um, they have a lot of positive COVID tests. 
So I think that Missouri will hang around a little bit. But Florida will win this game by 10. Navy SMU, Navy giving or getting 12 and a half over on their 58 and a half. I'd make this game SMU by a half total, six and a half. I love Navy getting the points again. Came back to bite me last week, but I'm doing it again. I don't think they'll win, but I just think that they're going to cover the point spread. 7.30 ABC, Ohio State, Penn State. Ohio State giving 11.5 over under 64.5. Um, Chris Feller, Kirk Kirksey on the call. Game day's there as well. And they picked this, I think, before knowing that Penn State was losing that game to Indiana. But oh well. Um, I project Ohio State 4.5 total, 66.5. So give me... Um, oh, I'm sorry, Penn State plus the points... Um, Home opener, I think they'll um, be competitive. I think the, the quarterback will play well. I think their defense can get some stops on Justin Fields and that offense a little bit. If Ohio State wins by 10, I win by bet. If this is 40-30 Ohio State, winning bet. And I also like the over as well, slightly. But the podcast play Penn State getting the points. 8 o'clock with UL Lafayette, Texas State. ULL laying 16.5 over under 56.5, I project. Louisiana by 19.5, total 52.5. So give me Louisiana minus the points. I like um, the under a little bit as well, but the podcast play is going to be Louisiana minus the 16.5. I think this is a good um, kick-ass game for them. I just think that uh, Texas State is just grossly overvalued. North Carolina, Virginia, North Carolina giving 7.5 over under 61.5. Um I project New York, North Carolina by 12, total 59. I like UNC minus the points. Um, I know a lot of people think that uh, this is a stay-away game and take Virginia if necessary because of how weird the line is. But I'm going to lay the 7 half with North Carolina, but I don't feel super about it per se. And I like the over a little bit, too. Oh, wait. Is it the over in that game? No, the under, actually, in this game a little bit. 61 and a half, but I'm not going to um, pull the trigger on that. But I like North Carolina to cover that. Oklahoma, Texas Tech, Oklahoma giving 14 and a half over under 66 and a half. I project OU 12, total 67 and a half. I'm taking Tech plus the points. My numbers are pretty close, but it's my last resort. And that's a key number, too. So um, give me Tech plus the the 14 and a half. 9.30, San Diego State, Utah State. San Diego State laying 7 and a half over under 43 and a half. I make this San Diego State 2, total 48. So, I like Utah State getting the points, and I also like the over 43.5, but I like Utah State more for the podcast play. And that's a key number as well. If San Diego State wins by 7, I win the bet. Um, Western Kentucky, BYU, 10-15 ESPN. BYU laying 28.5 over under is 51.5. I'd make this BYU by only 9, total 54. I'm taking Western plus the points. Um, I just think that uh, BYU is peeking ahead a little bit. They have some big games coming up. So give me Western Kentucky plus 20 and a half. This reminds me of the UTSA game a little bit as well. And then last but not least, 1030, Nevada, UNLV. Nevada giving a whopping 14 and a half over under 59 and a half. I would make this Nevada three total 56 and a half. I love UNLV getting the points. Rivalry game, their home, home opener. So give me UNLV plus the points, although I think Nevada will win a close but competitive game here late Saturday night. All right, now we'll move on to the NFL. We'll go over the Thursday night game from last night. And we'll do 
my picks for the NFL slate as well. The Falcons did not blow a game for once. They come out on top 25-17. They're 2-6. and six. Carolina's 3-5. and five. Matt Ryan, 21-30, 281 yards and a pick. Teddy Bridgewater, 15-23, 176 yards, a touchdown and a pick. He looked like the Heat got concussed last night. And then P.J. Walker came in, 1-4 for four for 3 yards. He stunk. But the Falcons get it done. Tr- Teddy Bridgewater throws a late pick as they're striving to try to uh, tie the game. And Atlanta hangs on and gets the win. I picked them yesterday, plus 1.5 on the show, but I hated the pick. But my numbers were correct, and it came through for me. And now we go to the picks for Sunday. First up, Colts Lions. Colts giving two and a half over on their 50. I'd make this Colts 5, total 49 and a half. So give me the Colts minus two and a half. I don't love it that much. Because they're on the road. And it looks like that's going to three. But I'd still like it at three. But not as much. So give me the Colts minus two and a half. Next up, Raiders, Browns. Browns giving two and a half over on their 15 and a half. I'd make this Browns four and a half total 61. I love the over here. I have a big edge on the over. A lot of people like the under due to weather. But it went down from 54 and a half to 50 and a half. Now I love the over even more. If this is a 30 to 23 game, I win. But I think the weather play is vastly overrated, and it proved that in the Chargers Bucks game a couple weeks ago. I absolutely love the over. Now it's one of my picks for Fab Five, and it came through for me. And I love this one a lot as well. So give me over 50 and a half. In the Browns Raiders game, and I think that the Browns will get the W. Rams Dolphins, Rams are favored by three over under 46. That looks like that's going up to three and a half. I project the Rams to be favored by one and a half, total 44. So give me Miami plus the points. I actually think that they have a shot to win the game outright. They are plus. 150 on the money line. Um, I don't know if they'll actually win the game outright, but I won't be surprised. But I'm not going to call for the upset here. I'm just going to call for uh, the plus three and then potentially soon to be plus three and a half for the Miami Dolphins. Minnesota Green Bay. Um, Green Bay giving five and a half over under 50 and a half. I project Green Bay six total 58 and a half. I love the over here as well. Um, I think this is a shootout, yes. Um, Minnesota might looking to trade guys. Um, Dalvin Cook coming back from injury. Um, they'll help their offense. That's why I like this over a little bit. And plus, they just Minnesota just trade away Yannick and Gakwe, so I expect Rodgers and company to be really good. So, to me, this is an easy overplay. Like the Raider game against the Browns, 30-23 to wins. And I think Green Bay will win the game. I think it'll be... I would stay away from the side, but I like the total uh, 50 and a half. I love that over a lot. Patriots, Bills. Bills giving three and a half over under 41. This looks like it's going to four. I project Bills six. Total 46 and a half. No um, Julian Edelman in this game. I love the Bills minus the points. This is the most amount of, I've liked the Bills in a while. So give me the Bills minus three and a half. I think they're over. they're undervalued, and I think they'd be undervalued at four as well. Jets, Chiefs, Chiefs laying a whopping 19 and a half over on their 49. I project Chiefs 14, total 46 and a half. Um, I like the Jets getting the points. I don't love it that much. But say the Chiefs win 35 to 18, they win. Uh, that's a cover for the Jets. So I could see that being 35-18. Chiefs pull some guys. And Chad Henney plays again, just like last week. And then the Jets and Sam Darnold get a garbage time touchdown. So, give me the Jets plus the 19.5. I like the under 49 as well. Next up, Ravens-Steelers. Ravens giving 3.5 over under 46.5. 
This looks like it's going to go up to four, and I'd still love the Steelers anyway. Um, I project the Ravens to be favored by a half, and I have the total 48 and a half. So um, I kind of like the over a little bit in this game as well, but um, I love the Steelers getting the points. And you know what? I'm calling for the out outright upset. Plus 168 on the money line. Um, I just think that Ben Roethlisberger um, looks healthy, although that second half he didn't look great against Tennessee. But I just, um, who have the Ravens beaten this year? Nobody good, right? So this is a big and important game for Lamar Jackson, but I don't trust him. So give me the Steelers plus the points. I think they win the game on the field too. And I'm going to say that Chris Boswell gets a game-winning kick as time expires to give the Steelers, let's say, a 27-24 victory. And then the over, um, the over um, would already be hit by then. All right, next up, the uh, Titans and the Bengals. Titans giving six over under 52.5. I project Titans by 4.5, total 54. Um... I kind of like the Bengals, and I kind of like the over. If I make the Bengals the podcast play, um, Joey covers. As we all know, he covers all year except for the Ravens. So give me a uh, Bengals plus six, but I think the Titans will win. Four o'clock window, Chargers-Broncos. Chargers giving three over under 44 and a half. I project the Broncos by a half point in the total 47 and a half. Um, give me Denver plus three. I hate it. I like the over 44 and a half too, but um, Broncos plus three. This could be a trap game for the Chargers. Plus 136 on the money line. I hate it, but I that's the way to go. Um, 425, Saints, Bears. Saints giving five and a half over on their 43 and a half. I project Saints by four, total 49 and a half. So a little edge on the Bears, but I love the over in this game. Love it. Um. The Bears are a good defensive team, but um, the Saints are a good offensive team, and I think the Bears' offense can bounce back a little bit here. If the Saints win 24-20, that's an over for me. So give me the over 43-and-a-half. 49ers, Seahawks. Seahawks giving 2-and-a-half, soon to go up to 3 because it's at minus 120. Over under 53-and-a-half. Um, I'm taking the Niners plus the points. I'm taking them to win outright. I project Seattle by a half, total 54. Um, so um, I don't love the total that much, but I'm taking the 49ers plus the points. I think they win the game outright. They're playing well right now. And um, I don't love the 49ers call, but I'm going to do it. Give me the 49ers plus the points. Sunday night football, a terrible game. Dallas Cowboys, Philadelphia Eagles. Dallas down their third string, third string quarterback, Ben DiNucci. They're getting nine and a half, total 43. I project the Eagles by five, total 47. Um, I kind of like the over in this game, but I got to take the Cowboys. Division dogs rule the day. Um, normally, I have a big edge on Dallas. No, they're not going to win the game. I think Philly wins, but they'll win by... Less than double digits, that's for sure. So, give me Cowboys 9.5. Maybe they backdoor Philly at the end and uh, lose by 7 or 8. And then we'll save Monday Night Football for Monday when the uh, New York Football Giants host the Tampa Bay Bump Buccaneers. Now I'm going to do talk some COVID. Um, the biggest news that came out of yesterday is that Trevor Lawrence tested positive for COVID-19. He will miss the game. On or well tomorrow against Boston College, that line is down from the the betting books. Obviously, I think Trevor Lawrence is worth six points. We talked about it earlier. I take Boston College at any number bigger than five and a half, maybe um, even seven and a half, because just to play it safe. So yeah, um, now the question is: Does he return for the Notre Dame game? He can if he follows the protocols and tests negative the X number of times the ACC needs. Um, the positive test was from Wednesday. 
So now the game against Notre Dame becomes all the more interesting. And now that big subplot is whether Lawrence will be back for that game or not. And Wisconsin's quarterback tested positive for COVID-19 as well. Um, Graham Mertz, who looked awesome against Illinois last week. Now he tested positive and then the backup tested positive. And they have like nine cases within their program. And um, more of its staff than players. And their game this week against Nebraska got canceled outright. So that's not going to be made up. And Nebraska wanted to make up a game and play Chattanooga. But but, but the Big Ten nixed it. So um, Nebraska and Wisconsin won't be playing. Now the question is, does Wisconsin return next week? We will see. Or is this a Florida situation? where um, they don't play for a while, except obviously the SEC had the flexibility to reschedule their games, unlike the Big Ten, who uh, is doing the uh, the eight-week schedule without the buys. And then some NFL COVID-related. Um, Giants guard Will Hernandez tested positive for COVID-19. Um, the Giants had no new positive say. That is a good thing, so it looks like their game Monday night against the Buccaneers will be on. And then a Bucks staff member tested positive for COVID too, but everybody else was negative, so it looks like they're ready to go Monday night. Um, the Giants are doing uh, virtual practice so they can clean their facility a little bit, and then they're going to practice at MetLife today, or they did virtual yesterday. And then um, the guys that were um, in contact with Hernandez, I think, will be virtual, though, but the rest of the team will be practicing at MetLife Stadium because of the wet grounds with the nasty weather here in Jersey. Um, so while Hernandez tests positive, he's going to be out for the game. That's a loss for their offensive line, as bad as their line is. Um, that's a kind of a big loss for them on the offensive line. So now somebody else is going to step in and get an opportunity for Big Blue. Um on their uh, dreadful offensive line. Um, so let's go that they had zero new positives today. So it looks like their game, like I said, is a good to go for Monday Night Football. And luckily, um, like I said, no new positives, and uh, it was only Will Hernandez. But there, um, the other four offensive linemen obviously were in contact with him, but they are all they all came back negative, and they're all uh, isolating, say, doing a virtual practice. So it looks like that those guys um, will be back barring some po- more positives from Big Blue. A managerial hire that I want to talk about really quick. The Chicago White Sox have hired Tony La Russa to be their new manager. Um, this was um, rumored for a while that they were looking at um, La Russa. Um, they did not even interview with A.J. Hinch or Alex Cora. Looks like that Coors might go back to Boston and Hinch might go to Detroit. Um, an interesting hire for a lot of reasons. He hasn't managed since 2011. So um, we'll see if this is a uh, situation like John Gruden with the Raiders. Although um, Gruden had that long layoff too. But his layoff was longer than La Russa's. But La Russa, I think has a chance to succeed. Um He's a good team coming back. I think they're going to be favored to win their division. Um, Michael Kopech coming back from Tommy John surgery. You got Dallas Keuchel. You got um, uh, Lucas Giolito. And you got Dylan Cease. So that's a great top four in that rotation. They need to make some bullpen moves. I, I know their bullpen's their weakness. Their offense is very good. Luis Robert. Nick Madrigal, both in year two next year. Um, well, Madrigal's going to technically be a rookie because he missed a lot of time this year. So it's going to be the asterisk year two rookie, like Aaron Judge in 2017. Eligible for rookie of the year, but it's an asterisk by it in a way because it's technically his second year. Um, and then um, Aloy Jimenez, Jan Mancada, Jose Abreu. That's a loaded offense there in Chicago. And I think La Russa has an excellent chance to succeed with the White Sox. Although I think they wanted A.J. Hinch, but A.J. Hinch didn't even interview with them. 
And but they wind up with Larusa. He's old, but um we'll see um how this works out. I think it'll work out because the White Sox, like like I said, are gonna be good. And I think Larusa needs a good roster at this point to succeed. Although he overachieved with a couple rosters, most notably with the Cardinals. But this is his best roster in some time, and I think that he has a real shot to represent the American League in the World Series in 2021. Now we'll preview NASCAR for the weekend. Um, We have some interesting races. We'll start tonight with the Truck Series. Um, They are racing... Um, this weekend in, I want to say it's Martinsville. There you go. It is Martinsville. So the truck series starting lineup, Sheldon Creed, Zane Smith, Austin Hill, Brett Moffin, Matt Crafton, Tyler Ankrum, Ben Rhodes, Grant Effinger, Brandon Jones, Raphael Lessard, Derek Krause, Tanner Gray, Austin Waynesmouth, Christian X. Johnny Sauter, Jordan Anderson, Spencer Boyd, Stuart Friesen, Danny Bone, Todd Gilliland, Trevor Bain, Sam Meyer, Timmy Hill, Dawson Cram, Ryan Truex, Natalie Decker, Tate Fogelman, Josh Rumi, Jennifer Joe Cobb, Ray Cicerelli, BJ McLeod, Cleek Greenfield, Carson Hosvar, Norm Benning, Cody Rohrbog, Spencer Davis, and Parker Kligerman. So the sponsor for this is the uh, um, NASCAR Hall of Fame 200. I'm going to pull up DraftKings for odds because they have the best NASCAR odds, in my opinion. Um, for this race tonight, this is tough. Um, I just want to see uh, the odds here. Um, I like... Grand Effinger, 12 to 1. That's pretty good for a solid driver that's won some races this year, Grand Effinger. So I'm going to go Grand Effinger, 12 to 1 to win this race tonight down in Martinsville. Now Xfinity starting lineup from um, Martinsville. Um, so you got Austin Sindrick, Noah Graxon, Justin Haley, Ross Chase, and Chance Briscoe. So pretty much the best five drivers in the uh, Xfinity series. Justin Allgaier, Brandon Jones, Shepard, and Ryan Seek, Harrison Burton, Michael Annette, Brandon Brown, Josh Williams, Brett Moffitt, Tommy Joe Martins, Alex Lobb, Ryan Vargas, Matt Mills, Jesse Little, Jeffrey Erner, Bailey Curry, Mayat Snyder, Jeremy Clements, Riley Herbst, Joe Graff Jr., Cody Vanderwell, Colby Howard, Donald Feig, BJ McLeod, Carl Lung, Gray Golding, Jeff Green, Chad Fincham, um, Timmy Hill, Stefan Parsons, AJ Almendinger, Mason Diaz, and JJ Yeely. Um, so this is the draft top 250. I'm going to go. Hmm. I don't like going single digit odds, but I think Justin Haley at 8 the 1 is good value. He's starting in third. Um, I just like him a lot. He's had a great year. Um, obviously Chase Briscoe got the promotion to, to the cup, which is good for him. But I think Justin Haley's not too far behind. So give me Justin Haley for the race on Saturday. And now Sunday starting lineup for cup series. Brad Kozlowski, Martin Truex Jr., Alec Bowman, Denny Hamlet, Kurt Busch, Kevin Harvick, Joey Logano, Chase Elliott, Kyle Busch, Ryan Blaney, Chris Bell, Matt DiBendetto, William Byron, Austin Dillon, Cole Custer, Clint Boyer, Tyler Riddick, Ricky Stenhouse Jr., Eric Jones, Eric Almarola, Ryan Newman, Ryan Priest, John Hunter Nemechek, Michael McDowell, Ty Dillon, Corey LaJoy, Jimmy Johnson, Chris Booster, Daniel Suarez, Brendan Poole, Matt Kenseth, Bubba Wallace, Josh Baliki, Timmy Hill, Quinn Half. Um, there's a TBA in here. It's starting in 36. James Davison, J.J. Yilly, and Joey Gase. This is a tough one. Kyle Busch coming off his first win, as we talked about on the podcast the other day. Um, 
Do you know who has excellent value in my mind? Come Sunday, somebody who um really got off to a good start this year and really fell apart. Alec Bowman, twenty-five to one. Why not? So, give me Alec Bowman, twenty-five to one, to win this race on Sunday afternoon. And now my Fab Five and best bet. We'll start with the Fab Five and we'll start in college football. Um, first up, Purdue, Illinois under 58 and a half. I just think I have a big edge here. Um, I don't think either of these teams are that great offensively. Even a uh, 30 to 20 game Gets me the under. I love it. And I'm rolling with it. Temple Tulane over 58 and a half. Um, so the same number, but the different um, different um, direction. Um, I think this game is played well into the 60s and potentially the 70s. Um, this is your classic AAC shootout in my mind. And I just think that number is very low. Next up, um, hmm, where is it? Southern Miss, there you go, Southern Miss minus one and a half against, um, damn, who do I, who are they playing? Oh, Rice, yeah, of course, um. Rice stinks. We all know that. Yeah, they're improved, but they still stink. So give me Rice, or I'm sorry, their opponent, Southern Miss, minus the one and a half, even if they win by three to win. And I like that it's under three a lot as well. Um, Penn State getting 11 and a half against Ohio State. Um, picking a big game for once on the show. Um, remember, we don't pick the 730 ABC game in best bets or Fab Five for this game case so um but this is a case for sure um Penn State's been competitive with them a lot throughout the last couple of years obviously the big win four years ago which put that program on the map led by Saquon Barkley but give me Penn State plus the 11 and a half even if it's 40 30 Ohio State I win the bet and last but not least um Charlotte getting nine and a half and my money line pick of the week is Charlotte plus 290 I think Duke is probably the most overrated and overvalued team from a gambling standpoint in the country. I've been fading Duke all year long. It's worked out a lot, but it didn't work out against Syracuse, but I think it'll work out for me here, at least from a spread standpoint. But I am going to take them on the money line just to give it a shot here with Charlotte, who I think is one of the more improved teams in Conference USA this season. So give me Charlotte plus 290 and plus 9.5, respectively. Against Duke, and now to the NFL side of the Fab Five. First up, Raiders Browns over fifty and a half. Um, I have a super big edge on this game, um, especially now that's down to fifty and a half. I like it even more. Yes, there's gonna be some weather problems. Like I said, this reminds me of Bucks Chargers when it was stupidly at forty three and a half, and that was pretty much done in the third quarter. I won't be shocked if this is um, almost done in the third or fourth quarter. So give me over 50 and a half for the Browns and the Raiders for my first one. Second one, over 50 and a half for Green Bay, Minnesota. Um, I just think that this is a shootout too. Um, Yannick and Gatway traded, Dalvin Cook back. I think this is a shootout in the NFC North. Bills minus three and a half against the Patriots. This is my favorite. This is probably going to be the double down play on FanDuel. But you can't do um, to- our totals in the FanDuel game. But um, um, I just like those two totals a lot more than some of the sides here. So give me Bills minus three and a half. This is my favorite side of the week, perhaps. Um, no Julian Edelman. Cam Newton's not 100%. And the pressure's on the Patriots. There's pressure on the Bills, too, obviously, to finally come through against the Pats. But... Um, I trust him here to do so. So give me Bills minus three and a half. Um, 
Next up, Saints Bears over 43 and a half. So my third total of the week in the Fab Five. I love it so much. 24-20 Saints victory gets it done for me. That's what I'm banking on here. This is very low for me and even for the Bears for that matter. But this is about the Saints offense for me. Um, like I said, even 24-20 can get it done. I just can't. I'm just stunned at how low this is. So give me over 43 and a half. And last but not least, Steelers plus three and a half against the Ravens. I'm taking them on the money line too, plus 168. And it's my money line pick of the week. Um, I think that worst case scenario, Ravens win by three, but I'm banking on the Steelers to get it done outright here to remain undefeated. Getting an undefeated team as an underdog is really cool. And I just don't think the Ravens are as good as they were last year. So give me Steelers plus three and a half and plus 168 for my money line pick of the week. And best bet of the day brought to you by FanDuel. Um, I have some options here for college football. Um, this is tough, guys. Um, I can go with Maryland or I can go with East Carolina. And both lines have went up since I uh, did the... The, um, all the pick segments. And then the Wyoming dropped to a half. So that's pretty much how to pick them now. I'm going to take Maryland in the 20 and a half. I just think that's too big of a number. I think the Tua's brother will play. And I think this is a closer game in Maryland's home opener than people think. And I think Minnesota wins this game. Like, I want to say maybe 38 to 20. And that works for me. 38-23 feels right for me in this game. Maryland's offense will be better. Uh, Minnesota's offense will be better. But I like um, Maryland getting the points just to uh, keep that. And even 30-10 uh, Minnesota, it's a win. So give me Maryland plus 20 and a half. I don't love it that much. But that's all I got for best bet of the day. All right, that's it for the show. I'll be back. On Monday, recapping everything in the NFL and college football. Um, talk some baseball as well with managerial hires. Um, AJ Hinch was just hired, so I'll get more into that on Monday. Maybe the Red Sox will have a manager by Monday as well. Who knows? It could be Alex Cora, as I talked about earlier. Um, we'll get back into the KBO as their playoffs are starting on Sunday. Um, so I'll get back into that just to have another sport to cover on the show. With um, college basketball not starting up for another couple weeks. NBA not likely being back until Christmas or maybe uh, Martin Luther Day. And then hockey not back until potentially New Year's. And then uh, obviously baseball not until next year. So we'll get the KBO back on the show for the first time since July. So we'll recap what's going on in that league and their playoffs. And obviously my best bet for Monday as well. Hope you guys have a great day, everyone.